seven Spanish angels took another angel home. Hey, I'm Willie Nelson. You're watching Hip Rock TV. We don't run, and we don't compromise, we don't quit, we never do. Howdy, friends and neighbors. I'm Tony Vance, the voice of Freedom's Voice. We're uh, we got it together enough to do another show, so if you're ready, we'll get into it. Let's talk about the root cause. Been a lot of speculation about the current unrest over the heavy-handed police policing and killing people right and left when it's not necessary and all of that. The militarization of, of the police is part of the problem. Sparked by the war on drugs, federal dollars expanded police agencies and bought the latest equipment. Beefed up city and sheriff's offices started acting like a branch of the military. And the military started a program of giving old military equipment to local police forces. That's why you see a, a armored personnel carrier driving down the streets of your city. The cops got that equipment and they got to do something. They want to do something with it. So the problem is that the military needs an enemy for operations. And the and we are that enemy. The citizens are the enemy. They they they've got this idea in their head that we are the enemy, especially poor people and brown people and black people, people who are the other. They're more likely to quit commit crimes. Yeah, they are more likely to quit commit crimes because you keep them in abject poverty. It is poverty that causes all this. Crushing poverty has a man working 40 hours just to put enough food in his belly so he can go work another 40 hours. It's poverty where a man goes and works 40 hours and still needs food stamps to get by. You know, this is servitude of the company store variety. You know, you owe so much to the company store, you can't get away from the damn job. It's like servitude, slavery, a different kind of slavery, but it's slavery nonetheless. This is all, this is all from feudal times. Oh, you better work to live. If you don't work, you can't live. Well, there's a lot of old people who can't work. Don't they deserve to live? I mean... We can eliminate this system very easily. The tax rate on wealthy people when Reagan took office was 70%. He lowered that down to 20-some percent, or down there somewhere, and then passed a bill to tax Social Security to pay for their the wealthy getting more money. Now, we can end this. And there's many ways we could do it. You could adjust Social Security. Uh, you're definitely going to have to raise taxes on the wealthy. And if you raise taxes by 4 or 5%, that would cover a universal basic income. And that would end abject poverty in America once and for all. Now, think about freeing our citizens, what freeing our citizens from economic servitude would do. I mean, if you had a thousand bucks coming in from the government and uh, your boss is crapping all over you and you want to go to a, find a different job, you have the money, the financial support to do that with that thousand bucks a month coming in. Without it, you're stuck. You can't get out of that job. It would give us a financial freedom to where we could craft our lives to be the way we would like them and have the financial support to do so. 
that thousand bucks a month is going to send a lot of people to college too, especially if we eliminate tuition. The guy that going to cure my cancer isn't going to cure my cancer because he's stuck in some goddamn low-wage crafted policy to keep him in servitude. A simple raise in the, the wealth tax would pay for all of it. Thousand bucks a month for every citizen age 18 and older. And if you wanted to do something even better, you could start a small account for every child that's born in America and they'll get that money when they turn 18 or 21. Now, the naysayers will say, well, if you give me a thousand bucks a month, I'm going to lay on my ass. I'm not going to work. I'm not going to try and get more money. That's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. Now, uh, there is a book titled Give People Money by Annie Lowry that goes through all of this. And every test of this where you give people money and see what they do with it shows that people don't sit on their ass and get drunk and waste that money. They use that money to make their lives better, to move to another job, maybe just to get a better brand of toilet paper. Now, why can't we do that? What is the reason for not using the tools and money we have to eliminate abject poverty in America? Why, why aren't we doing that? You know, Social Security recipients, they work. VA retiree or military retirees, they work. So there's no reason to believe that the people receiving the basic, basic stipend wouldn't work. Matter of fact, every, to every test of this universal basic income shows that people do not sit on their ass and do nothing. They get up and they try and make their lives better. You know, one of the reasons businesses do not open in depressed areas is because the population doesn't have any money to spend. The basic citizen stipend would change all that. You'd start seeing uh, the coffee people with their stores all over the damn place. There'll be a grocery store in every community because the people will have the money to spend. We have the tools, the wealth, and the ability to end abject poverty in America once and for all. No one would starve. No one would have to uh, cut one bill to pay another. No one would have to uh, trade food stamps and get in trouble so they can fix the car and get to their job. All that would be ended. And with the police reform and reform of our laws coming along, this might be a decent place to live one of these days. <laughs> a universal basic income will end abject poverty in America forever. We only have to institute it. Now, if you want to cut it off at people making 100000 a year, fine. But... We have an obligation to our fellow citizens to help improve their lives as we improve our own. And the best improvement to Americans' lives is to end abject poverty once and for all. We have the tools and the wealth and the ability. We only lack the will. Why is that? Where are all those Christians screaming to make life better for the poor? We can do this, and billionaires will still be billionaires. We just need to find politicians that have the courage to do what needs to be done. And hopefully that'll happen before I'm a toad or under a rock. <laughs> That's it for today, folks. Remember, you can end abject poverty. You just have to choose to do it. Oh. Update on the cancer.
I finished my seventh round of cancer. They did a scan. The tumor is half the size that it was before. Half the size. Kind of freaked me out a little bit. But I think that the RSO, the Rick Simpson oil, has a lot to do with it. I would recommend anybody who's going through chemo to do the protocol for Rick Simpson oil, the 90-day protocol. It's, I think it's certainly helped me out a lot. The, half the tumor's gone. I got to go through an eighth round of chemo. And then I'm hoping they'll give me like a two-month break and then a, start it all over again until the cancer's gone. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. Uh, I have this coming Saturday, I have four and a half round, hours of chemo. And then I take the little meter home for two days. And then they take all that shit off me and I recover. So that's where we're at. Uh, things have been successful. I'm grateful to everybody who's praying for me and cares about me. And we'll see you next time. Next time I put up the show. <laughs> Hopefully I'll have enough energy after this next round to do that. We'll see you then. Hi, I'm Willie Nelson and the Willie Nelson Teapot Party and I endorse Veterans for Medical Cannabis Access. Just roll me up and smoke me 